Hello, hello, it is Tarot Tuesday. So we're gonna be talking about tarot. Um, a lot of people always ask me, and this is the problem that I had when I started reading tarot, was, you know, I got my, um, my deck of cards and I read through the book and I learned every single card and what it meant, but I still had a lot of trouble reading the cards together. So tonight we're going to talk about how to read those cards together and how to make up the story that you're seeing within the spread. Okay. Um, so the first thing I want to say is, you know, somebody asked me, do you need to have, do you need to use your intuition? If you're here, say hi, let me know, comment below. Let me know if you're catching the replay. Let me know what you think about it. Um, if you already know this or if you do it a different way, whatever. Um, so you don't need to use your intuition in order to read cards. However, using your intu intuition will get a deeper message and a more resonating connecting message, I would imagine. Okay, I, I use my intuition, so I can't speak for the other side that don't. But I will say is even tarot readers that don't use their intuition are probably using their intuition. They just don't know it. Okay, so one thing that I want to let you guys know is that you know, every time before I go to read tarot, I do a little ritual so that I can open up my intuition. So I can call in my angels, call in my spirit guides. And I always say, you know, please deliver the messages that are going to resonate and give them accurate, helpful information. So you always want to make sure you do some kind of ritual, um, you know, maybe some kind of clearing meditation or opening up your chakra meditation or something just to let the divine energy know that you're here and you're ready to receive their messages for the highest good of whoever you're reading for, even if it's yourself, okay? Um, so I wanted to let you guys know that first off. And then second, um, so I am gonna be talking about intuition tonight and how to read these cards together because I think what happened was even I was using my analytical mind when I was reading the cards to start, but, and they didn't flow together because analytically this card means this, that means that, and that means that. Well, how the heck do you put that together? Like, what's the story here? But once you kind of let that mind go and kind of have a baseline of, not even a baseline, like this is even like if you didn't even know what the cards meant, like we're going to go through that tonight. If you didn't even read that book, we're still going to learn, you know, what the cards mean. And like I said, every deck that I use is different and sometimes the cards mean completely different things in different mm -hmm. decks. So I wanted to start out here by showing you three different decks um, and we're going to use two different cards. We're going to use the two, of, the two of Swords and the Two of Wands, okay? Hey Amanda! Alright, so I'm going to show you the difference in the three different decks for these cards. So we'll start out with the Two of Swords. Now I apologize because my phone doesn't do that mirror imaging, so the words are going to be backwards. But you can see the Two of Swords here in this deck. What do we see? We see a girl. This is a witch deck, so therefore she's got a witch hat on. She's there, she's blindfolded, and she's throwing darts at a board. But look at where she threw that dart. She got it right in the middle. So what does that tell us in this card? If I had no idea what the Two of Swords meant, what would this say to you? Comment below. Let me know what you guys think. What would this say? She's got a cat there. She's got a crow there. You know, and here she is. She's standing in front of a dart board and she's throwing darts. She's got blindfold on, but yet she's got it right in the middle. Bullseye. Derek. Um, so to me, this would say, you might not know what you're shooting for, but you're going to get it. You know, you're, you're going to get, you're hitting it right in the middle. You're hitting it right on point. So it doesn't matter if you're blinded or that you feel like you, you might not know where you're shooting, but you're going to get there and you're going to shoot right. Okay. So again, had no idea what the two of swords, I don't, I'm not even thinking about what the two, two of swords mean. And sometimes in the readings, you'll be drawn to different things on the cards. Like even now, like sometimes I'm like, I've never seen that on this card before, but all of a sudden it's being, I'm being drawn to it. 
So, you know, in this card, if you were drawn to like the cat on here, you might say like, you know, maybe you're kind of tiptoeing around the issue, you know, like maybe kind of like going about your way, but tiptoeing around some issue, whatever you're drawn to, whatever that means for you. Okay. A cat to me, I see him walking around kind of tiptoeing around. So that would mean tiptoeing. Now the same exact card, the two of swords in another deck looks like this. Let's see if you can get it there. Okay. So here she is. She doesn't have a blindfold on. She's got two swords, but they're behind her back. And she looks like maybe she's tied behind the back. So what would this mean for you? To me, this would mean, you know, maybe you're keeping yourself trapped. Maybe you're, you can do much more, but you're kind of putting yourself you're, you're, you're keeping yourself stuck, right? You can untie your hand. I'm sorry that it keeps going in and out. <laughs> I'm shaking. Um, you can tie your hands. Uh, you can untie your hands at any time, but you're choosing not to. You're choosing to leave those, those hands behind your back. So again, totally same card. Have no idea what a two of swords means, but what does the picture mean to you? And, you know, I saw this on YouTube when I was trying to figure it out myself of how to read the cards together. And they're like, just tell the story. And I was like, what? Like, turn you off. But it, <laughs> I should have listened a lot more because that's truly what it is because your intuition is telling you that that's what that card means. So now this is another one of two of swords. So again, you can see the two of swords. Now she's blinded here, right? But when I look at this card, I see light brightness around her eyes so even though she's blinded there's still like the light is there sorry it's not focusing well um the light is there and it's you know so even though she can't see i feel as though in this card maybe she's being divinely guided you know and even though she can't see what's ahead of her she's still got to go down the path so again, just looking at the card, what does the story tell you? It's so funny. I belong to this Facebook group and um, one of the tarot readers had her boyfriend like do readings, right? So she would pick up a card and he would just be like, he would just say what the card was, like what the pictures show. And he was like right on. And it was, it was just so funny. And it's so true because the images show the story. So without even reading the book, you can probably figure out what it means right so now let's go to the two of wands so the two of wands here what does this look like you got a guy here and there looks like there's two different paths you got the two of wands right there they can go for so for me in this deck when i look at this card and i usually if you hear me on youtube like i usually say that like well in this deck this is what this means to me because I use my intuition as to what the picture is telling me, not what it it's supposed to be, okay? Because I think that that's where you get screwed up when you're trying to read the cards together. You're trying to say, okay, that card means this, this card means this. Well, what the heck does it mean together? But when you look at the pictures and you tell the story that you see in the pictures, it starts to make sense, right? So this guy has two choices. Which way are you going to go? You know, which way are you going to go? Let me see. If you look at it here, one way looks like it has a very big mountain to climb. The other one looks like it might be a little bit easier to go down that path. So when you look at this card, that's the story that I'm getting here. Hey, Carol. Right? So now another deck here, you've got the two of wands. Same card. Totally different image. Now this guy seems like he's tied down to these wands, right? But he's looking at this bird. So in this deck, when I read this card, I see that, you know, you might be stuck right now, but you're looking, you're looking for the birds chirping. You're looking for something better. You're looking for something, you know, more peaceful. You're kind of like, you're trying to hear the birds chirp, even though you're stuck in this place. So this might resonate with work, where if you're stuck in a work atmosphere, where you really don't want to be there, but it's like you're constantly looking out the window to kind of escape your reality of the situation. So again, just looking at the image, not having any idea what the two of wands is supposed to mean, 
you can kind of get an idea. Wow, there's a card stuck here. Ooh, oh, that's awesome, guys. The card that was stuck is the High Priestess, which is all about, okay, so let's look at this card that just popped out. So the High Priestess, let's see if I can get you to focus. There we go. So here she is, she's sitting. She looks like she's like on a throne. She's reading a book, yet her face is all blacked out. And she's got a baby there. So for me, if I was looking at this card, I would say, you know, maybe the unknown because of the black face and, um, and knowledge, right? Maybe unknown knowledge, which would then, because she's reading this book, and maybe she's teaching because there's a baby here. She's inspiring or teaching, you know, um, I don't know, people, kids. So to me, it's like unknown knowledge. Well, what really is that? Well, spirituality, the divine, right? It's unknown. So therefore, just looking at this card, I don't have the high priestess for any other deck right now, but you know, for so for me in this card, I'd be like, there might be something unknown that you really have to connect with inside yourself, right? That blackness, it's like, go within and maybe connect more and listen to that intuition that's calling you, the knowledge that you have inside, right? That's what I would say with that card, with that image. All right, so another two of wands in the other deck looks something like this, where it's basically... I don't know. When I look at this deck, I'm like, wow, shit is about to happen. <laughs> it, it seems like he's on top of a castle, maybe. You know, there's the there's the torches here. He's holding a ball and looking at that ball. And like, I in this deck, I feel like when I look at that, it's like he's ready to make a jump. Like he's ready to make a leap. He's like ready for something new. And that's what I'm looking. So all of those cards are different yet they're the same card. But I'm using my intuition and I'm looking at what this means to me because when you use your intuition and when you connect, they use symbols and, and words and all that stuff that resonate with you. So when you look at this card, whatever resonates with you is the message that you're supposed to be giving, all right? So I had to go through that so that you guys can then understand putting the cards together. All right, so give me one second. Put these cards in the right deck. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and shuffle, and I'm going to get a few cards to kind of see how we can read the story together. So give me a message for the group. And again, we talked about shuffling, I think on the first, oh, maybe the second night about shuffling the cards, how different styles, you know, you can, you make the demands, you know, are the cards going to come out? Are they going to, um, are you going to choose? Are you picking from the top? Are you picking from the bottom? Are you cutting the deck? Whatever you want is how it's going to be. Okay. Okay. So the two, the three cards that just popped out is the higher font, the four of cups and the judgment card. So let's try to read these cards together. The higher font. What's happening here? It looks like people are coming, bowing down. So this guy is probably really important. He looks like he's sitting on a throne, sitting on some kind of chair that makes him really, really important. Um, can't really see his face, but he's definitely there. And I definitely feel like he is, I'm getting the word royalty right now. So that's my intuition telling me, well, they're bowing down to him. So that's like royalty. Um, maybe they've come for advice you know, like a priest, right? So this could be um, somebody that they need knowledge from, right? Somebody that they look up to that they need knowledge from. And then you've got the Four of Cups. What's this guy doing? Well, he looks like he's taking time out and he looks like he's meditating. 
trying to connect to his intuition, become more peaceful. And then we've got the judgment card. Now this card always means something different to me depending on when I'm reading it and what spread it's in. So there's two things that I'm usually drawn to on this card. It's either this person down here or this person up here. Now in, when I pulled this card, I was pulled to her, not this one. So it, very different energy here, right? So I feel like this woman here is ready. She's ready to go. I should probably cover her up because Facebook might delete my post. <laughs> um, so, you know, it looks like she's ready to go. This one down here looks like she's having some trouble. I think it's a she, yeah, she's got long hair. Um, but it looks like she's having some trouble and maybe struggling a little bit. So depending on what you're drawn to, so comment below, let me know which one were you drawn to here? Um, when you looked at this card, was it the one up here, like ready to go, her hands are out waiting to receive whatever is given to her? Or are you, were you drawn to the one down here where she's kind of struggling, um, maybe not knowing what to do, maybe judging herself, judging others, the, you know, the, the negative thoughts in her head. So again, using your intuition, what were you drawn to first? And don't doubt yourself. Whatever it is, is the right thing. The first reaction that you have, the first draw that you have, whatever you're drawn to first is basically um, what you, what message you want to go along with. Don't doubt it because now I'm looking at her, but I'm like, no, 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 no. First I was drawn to her. So that's what this is. So let's read these three cards together now. Looking for advice, right? Looking for... Um, some knowledge, some guidance, maybe. We're here, we're bowing down, it's like teach us, and here we are meditating, right? So to me, this would mean you you might need some guidance, you might need someone to help you get in the space of, you know, um, of clarity, of calmness, of peace. So you might need a teacher, a guide, um, a priest, a therapist, whatever this is for you, you might need help getting to a, p a space of calmness, right? A space of uh, teaching you how to meditate, teaching you how to control the thoughts in your mind, whatever this is for you, right? So we said he was meditating. So what does meditating mean? Well, we go there, we meditate so that we gain clarity. We meditate to relax. We meditate to you know gain more connection to our higher selves. So you might need help doing that. You might be looking for guidance to get you here, to get you here. It's the story, right? We're gonna meditate so that we can open ourselves to receive the messages that we need to hear. Open ourselves so that we, we can open ourselves to receive the light, the connection. I mean, you can see this guy, there's a hand here dropping something right into her. So, you know, that bright white light, so that's how you would read that story together. So guidance from somebody that can help you gain the clarity, the calmness, the peacefulness, so that you can open to receiving the abundance of life, to receive the connection from the divine, all of that. So does that make sense to you guys? How you can actually read the cards together. Now, if I was analytically thinking, now watch this. Analytically, these cards, this is the higher font. This is like a priest, it's a teacher looking for some, you know, somebody higher than you and knowledge, okay? This one is like, usually it means kind of like you're bored, kind of stuck somewhere, you know? Um, and then this one, you know, judgment is judgment. So you could mean, you know, that you're judging others, that you have some kind of limited beliefs on yourself, and all that stuff. So when you're thinking analytically, it doesn't flow as nice. I'm sorry, it's backwards on the screen, so I'm trying to put them in order. It doesn't, it doesn't flow as nice. So therefore, you know, using the pictures on the cards are so much easier because now you're actually calling in your intuition. So, hey, Aunt Donna, my aunt is in the house. Uh, hey, Ruby definitely feeling its power. So I'm thinking you're saying this card where it's powerful right there. Hey, Leslie. Yeah. So does that help you guys with that? I'll do another set just so that we can go through one more. 
Um, but I hope that's making sense and helping you. Like I said, I had a lot of people ask me, like, how do you read the cards together? You know, how do they make sense together? And when you actually kind of use your intuition and use the pictures on the cards, you're just telling a story. And that story will resonate. All right. So, and I usually ask them, like, give me a message for the group. What group, what message does this group need to hear today? And then like right here, like you'll see all my cards are kind of like out and then I'm drawn to certain cards in here. So um, like this one sticking out, we're gonna use that one. Then this one I'm drawn to sticking out and then this one I'm drawn to sticking out. All right, so here we go. Give me a hashtag Tarot Tuesday if you guys are liking the reading <laughs> or liking the lesson here. All right, so we've got the Seven of Swords. We've got the Ace of Swords. And we've got the Ten of Swords. So all Swords, swords cards, right? So the one thing that you do need to know, and I think I spoke about this in the beginning, is the different suits. Now the Swords relate to your inner thoughts, your inner being. Okay, so they're all swords. So right there, that tells me there's a lot of shit going on inside. Okay, so um, so the seven of swords, let's look at this card. And it's, let's see if I can get it to focus right. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, so you can see here, I'm just going to turn my comments off for a second. Okay. Um, so you can see here that there's a fire and there's this guy here that is taking his swords and he looks pretty shady to me, right? It's like he's looking back, making sure nobody's looking at him. He's taking his swords. He's got some in his hand, some in his backpack, yet he's leaving one right there. So a little bit of shadiness going on. If you could see... His face doesn't look too shady, but it's just, you can see he's looking back, making sure nobody's watching him. So definitely some shadiness happening here. Then we have the Ace of Swords. Now the Ace, you know, this is kind of like, like what would you say with this card? I would say, well, we're on fire here, right? The Swords is on fire, blazing, hot. Actually, when I look at this now, I've never seen this before. Again, see, like I just said, this kind of looks like a wolf. I don't know if it's meant to be a wolf, but it definitely looks like a wolf, like jumping over on fire, jumping over the knife, right? So the ace is, because this is kind of like not very easy to get like a picture from, but the ace is, I'm sorry, it keeps focusing. Um, the ace is our new beginnings. Right, so we've got the Seven of Swords, New Beginnings, which we know is about our inner peace, our inner selves, and we're on fire. So would you say that's a good new beginning, a bad new beginning? What would you think? And then we have the Ten of Swords. Now this is easy to get a picture on. All right, this is put to bed. We're dead here. There's no coming back from having nine swords in your back. So swords in your back, what would that mean to you? Backstabbing, maybe? You know, maybe you've been backstabbed. Maybe people don't treat you right. You know, maybe, it, you know, you've been walked all over and now it's like time to put that to bed, all right? So it's time like, you ain't getting up from that. It's time to just let that chapter close and let's start a new one. And that's with the, the seven, Ace of Swords. So having the Seven of Swords with the shady guy here, the Ace of Swords, and the Ten of Swords, what would that say to you? Put my things back. Okay. What would that say to you? You got some shady shit going on in your life. There needs to be a new beginning. There ain't no coming back from it. So again, so that's kind of the storyline. How would this resonate to somebody? Relationship. If this resonates with you in a relationship, you got a shady partner that ain't no good. 
It's time to take your power back and start a new beginning of focusing on you. Light yourself on fire. Get your power back. Because there ain't no coming back in this relationship. If, he's, if they've cheated on you, if they destroyed your trust, there's no coming back from that. So now it's time to focus on you. Right? Be, be the fox. What do they call it? They're confusing me now. I, I forgot what I just called it. What I call it? Is that a fox? Did I call it a fox? I don't know. I think, yeah, it looks like a fox. Um, you know, whatever. You get what I'm saying. So yeah, so that would be my story that resonates here. If it resonates with work, it would be some shadiness is happening at work. You need to rise above and you need to quit the shit. You need to let, you know, end it. Be the bigger person. There's no coming back. So you've got two choices. You could either quit your job or you can rise above with that ace of swords and don't let that get to you anymore. Okay, so that's how I would read it. Is this helping you guys? Hope so. So, uh, wolf, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, wolf, okay. <laughs> uh, me coming on night, late at night might not be so great. All right, uh, so grateful for you. This is amazing. Recently felt called to start working with tarot. Yeah, I mean... Seriously, you can, I mean, I definitely, I definitely recommend learning the cards because when you kind of get stuck, you'll be like, oh, what does the card mean? Okay, the card means this. Okay, so let me then look at the picture and it kind of will make a little bit more sense to you. Like, let me take for, let me just take a few cards and we'll go through it. Like the tower card. What the heck is happening here? Everything is falling apart. There's lightning striking. People falling, rocks falling, right? People are trying to get out at the bottom of it, you know? So the tower card, foundations crumbling down. So analytically, this means like things are built on faulty, faulty foundation. You know, like your marriage might come crumbling down because it wasn't real to begin with. The person that you're with might be a narcissist. There's a shield, uh, you know, a mask. That you're, you didn't see in the beginning. So things built on faulty foundation. But just by looking at this card, you can tell that it's going down, right? You don't need to read a book in order to see that if you pull this card, it's going down. Um, the Empress card. Well, geez, she looks vibrant. She looks like she's a queen. She looks like ready to go, full of love, full of light. You know, there's... I think the pillow or whatever I, oh, I think that's her shield or something is a heart you know there's stars on her cow I mean this card compared to this card seriously <laughs> we want this one not this one however these cards are also good as well because when it comes crumbling down there's new beginnings and so the tower is not always scary and the tower for me when I have the tower card it is usually divinely guided. So even though it feels like everything is falling down around you, there's light at the end of that tunnel. So, all right. So, um, you guys want me to do one more round? See if you can, guys can read it. You're going to comment for me. I'm going to let you guys read the next round. Tell me what you think. And I usually, um, if you if you notice, I usually pull three or four cards because, you know, with two cards, you know, with one card, if, <laughs> if you know me, I'm very short and sweet. So when I pull one card, there's not much I'm going to say about this card. Like people can talk like an hour on this one card. Me, I'm like, listen, you're tied, you're, you're tied down and you're looking for something better. That's it. Like, I'm very, like, blunt. You know me in here. So I'm very blunt and to the point. I don't got time for fluff. So that's the deal. Um, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't last very long. So therefore, I usually pull three, you know, three cards to be able to tell the story. 
okay? Oh, and court cards. All right, I'm gonna need some comments if you want me to share my little secret. I had a, a very, it's actually a very big secret and you might, you might judge me, but you might not. So give me some Tarot Tuesdays in here or any comments. Let me know if you want me to share my secret with you. <laughs> Putting my credibility on the line here. Yeah, Carol, so the, the Oracle cards are, um, I wouldn't say they're easier to read because you can still use your intuition with the Oracle cards, but you know, some of them have the writing on it. So it's a little bit easier to get the message. I was actually looking for the tarot cards that have the writing on it because some of it, um, I think it's more of the ones that are like, um, like the two of fire than, um, um, the two of, of wands, you know, it says like the two of fire and then it will actually write a description down below, those could be easier to read too. So again, when you're searching for tarot cards you, and then you're just starting, you might want to get something like that in order to, um, in order to, uh, to be able to read them a little bit easier. I'm only seeing one comment guys. I'll give you a couple more seconds. Also, I'm not sharing my secret yet. I'm gonna have to wait to another, another tarot Tuesday. <laughs> some hearts, some likes, have this hair that's bothering me here. All right, I'm going to keep going then. We're going to go ahead and do a, um, unless I'm just not seeing them. So if they all pop in, I will share. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a round with you guys and see if you guys can tell me what's happening. Kelly, what's up, girl? Glad to see you. I'm doing some tarot lessons in here, teaching how to read the cards together. Oh, great! I'm gonna share my story, and Kelly Lunt is in my <laughs> is in my live right now. <laughs> my secret. All right, I'm gonna tell you a very big secret. I'm seeing them all come in. In the very beginning, when I was reading tarot. I left out the court cards. So if you see tarot probably from like a year ago on YouTube and all that, you will realize that there are no court cards. No, stay here. Are you kidding me? You'll, you'll appreciate this. There were no court cards in my tarot readings. Okay. Because the way that I learned is that we learned with all different things. We learned with a deck of cards. We learned like a regular deck with the, you know, the aces, the, the, um, you know, the, oh my gosh, you can't even think about it. You know, the hearts and all of that stuff. Um, we learned making up our own cards. So I thought to myself, I had a really, really hard time reading court cards. I had no idea what the heck, if they were people, if it was energy, um, the court cards confused the crap out of me. So I left them out because with the mindset that I had and the way that I was taught was if I can make up my own cards, mm -hmm then what's the difference if I just leave the court cards out? And I said, my spirit guides and angels will allow me the same messages without the court cards. Because if they're confusing to me, then I can't read it anyway. So if I leave it out, the same messages will come through just in different cards. And that's what happened. So I had left the court cards out for quite a few months until I could really incorporate them in because it was really overwhelming me. So I just left them out. So I urge you to do the same thing. If there's any kind of cards that are causing you a lot of, you know, um, doubt and fear and all of that, take them out and start reading without them. And as you get more confident with yourself, you add them back in. Okay. So yeah, so that is my big secret. Give me some hearts and likes. Let me know you still love me. <laughs> But yeah, that was my mindset and that, that was my secret. So you will, you will see, uh, um, don't go back watching the videos, but yeah, there was no court cards in my, um, beginning tarot reads, but now I incorporate them in because now I can, 
I can pull on the energy of them. All right, so let's go ahead and do a round. I want you guys to tell me what you think the cards are saying. Oh, speaking of court cards, look what just popped out. The Queen of Swords. So take a look. I'm going to put her down so I can get the other, um, the other two cards for us. So after going through everything we just went through, let's see what you guys think what the reading is going to say. All right, so I'll do one. I'll show you all the cards. So we've got the Queen of Swords. Thank you, Kristen. Um, we've got the Five of Pentacles, and I'll show you each of these, and then you guys can tell me what's happening. And then you've got the Five of Swords. So, Queen of Swords. Now, I usually... I usually now read the court cards as energy. And you you can say that a court card, and court is like a page, a knight, a queen, and a king. And you can say that the, um, you know, you could either say it's them or it could be somebody that they're dealing with. And you, you kind of really never know, but you can... It's either theirs or somebody that they're dealing with. So that's usually what I say. I usually say it's theirs first, but I could say the energies could be vice versa. Okay, so what does this card look like? What type of person? And comment below, let me know. What type of person does this look like? Is she loving? Is she nurturing? Is she kind of like take no bullshit type of thing? What does she look like? Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Make sure you do a live over in the East Coast. Want to see you and Tyler or just you. All right. So what does she look like? Can you guys see her? There we go. She looks like a mother, strong, independent. Does she have boundaries or does she let people walk all over her? Okay. Now, second card. Five of Pentacles. What, what is happening here? Is this a good energy? Not so great energy? Let me move my comments over. There we go. Now let's look at the whole picture, see what's happening here. Does this look like loving energy? Does it look like shame? Does it look like hurt? Does it look like happiness? <laughs> Danger. Does she look like she's running from something? Does she look like she's running to something? You guys are doing good here. So I keep it up. I think the comments are just a little delayed, so I'm just waiting to see what you guys wrote. Defeat. Along. Does this person have money? Is this person rich? Someone is attacking and they need to escape a situation. Fear and hurt, sadness. Maybe sneaking away, unsure of stuff. Mm-hmm. Awesome, guys. All right. And then you've got the Five of Swords. What does this look like? Is 
this person feeling safe? Is this person inviting? Wants you to come in and sit down at his fire and have a meal? War. All the comments are coming in now. Lacking self-esteem, looks like someone is helping her. Getting her away from that situation, right? So this card's defending. You want to be on this guy's side or do you want to be against him? Regain confidence. Okay, I'll let the comments come in. So now, ready for battle? Absolutely. Queen of Swords. Five of Pentacles. Five of Swords. What's the story here? Right, the wolves don't seem bothered by him. It might be part of his pack. All right, so tell me the story here. Fearless, mm-hmm. If you were reading this message to somebody that's sitting in front of you, what would you say to them? Start with the Queen of Swords. Do you feel like this is their energy now? Do you feel like maybe this is the energy they have to get to? What's the story here? And you guys can have all different story. Whatever your story is, it's not going to be incorrect. It's what your intuition is telling you. Don't be shy. I'm waiting. <laughs> I'll wait. I want you guys to try. I'm sure the comments are just delayed, but I want you guys to try. We have the Queen of Swords energy followed by the Five of Pentacles here. Now, Pentacles, and it, you know, it's like I said, you definitely want to learn the cards. Pentacles is about money, you know, abundance, stability. The swords, again, are about inner strength. So this is swords, money, swords. You think the message is to build self-confidence? Absolutely. Do you think they've been through something? in order to put them in a state of um, the lack of confidence. Not their energy now. They are allowing that Queen of Swords to have the power. They seem to be running from this or intimidated. Two of Swords maybe where she's running isn't any better. So you think that maybe there's somebody with this kind of energy around her, right, or around them that's causing them to be maybe a little bit less confident and they've got to kind of stand up for themselves. That's a good, that's a good read right there. Uh, my daughter's with me and this is her comment. I think someone lost someone very close to them and became very vulnerable, but they need to learn that they can be independent and strong. Wow. That's amazing too. Absolutely. That's awesome. Good read. A strong feminine energy will come in and take over. It's going to be a rough road, but you will be ready for it and overcome the obstacles. Awesome. Yes, yes, yes. I love it, guys. That's really awesome. So without knowing the meaning of the cards, 
You can make a story. You can read the story. You can put the cards together. So lose the analytical part of what the cards mean. You know, if you, it may, it's like the, like knowing the meanings of the card, give the story the fluff, you know, but you've got a baseline right here. Strong, independent energy. Something happened here, right? That doesn't feel good. And now you've got to kind of protect something. That's the baseline of the story. So now you'll know that the Queen of Swords energy here, you know, when I, when the, and you'll learn that as you read, certain cards are going to mean certain things to you, which might not, not mean the same thing to somebody else. And that's why you read intuitively, not like exactly what the cards mean. So if it doesn't, if somebody doesn't, I've never really had it, like maybe once or twice, where somebody would say, well, that's not what that card means. Well, that's what the card means to me, and I'm the reader, so therefore that's all that matters. So to me, this is the card, because of how it resonates with me and what I've been through in my life, it resonates with me when I see the Queen of Swords that somebody needs to enforce some boundaries here, all right? But that's what it means to me. I'm not saying anything that you guys wrote was wrong because it's not, because that's how it resonates with you. So there needs to be some boundaries established here. You need to put your foot down, gain more empowerment, gain more control, because you might be feeling left out in the cold right here. You might be feeling like, you know, you didn't get everything that you deserved and that you've got to kind of like move away from something. But you need to stand guard and you need to put your, you know, put your swords up and be ready to fight for what's yours. So that's kind of how I would read that, right? Because that's what these cards mean to me, but these cards are going to mean something different to you. So every single thing that you guys wrote was absolutely amazing. And you guys can read tarot cards. Look at you. Look at you. Yay. All right, guys, that is all for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that really, I, you know, I wasn't going to make you guys wait because I'm still going to go through the cards and kind of like what they mean. But like I said, I'm very short and sweet. So therefore, it's not going to take long. Um, so I do, you know, recommend getting the book, but, and again, you have to be confident in who you are and what you do because I'm short and sweet. And I spent a lot of time going, oh, I have to learn like more to say about it. I have to, I have to be like, I have to dive into it. I have to speak longer for every card, but you know what? I don't because my style is short and sweet. I don't have time to fluff. I don't short and sweet. Here's your message. That's it. Um, and that's how I read. And some people will like that and some people won't. Some people will want the hour readings where mine only takes like 15 minutes. But you know what? You're going to get the same message in the 15 minutes that you're going to get in the hour reading, right? And it might resonate more because it's short and sweet and it doesn't leave your brain thinking of, oh my God, what did she say over the whole hour? So, you know, uh, that's why I only do like half hour tarot reads because there ain't no way unless I pull, <laughs> I'd have to pull like the whole deck of cards to make like an hour reading. <laughs> so, um, or do like all, you know, all different, but even, but even when I do like different situations, like money, love, career, like all that, it's still short and sweet. So embrace who you are and how you read. Okay. Because whatever you feel your intuition is letting you know, just like I had to take the court cards out and that's okay. I have no shame in that, you know, but that's how I had to start. And until I got comfortable, that's just like when I tell you about, you know, the tattoo tarot deck that I have over there, like, yeah, I've been finally able to break it out. Am I reading with it every day? No, but you know, one day maybe, you know, I'll be able to read with that every day. But until then, I'm going to leave it over there and then maybe one day I'll incorporate it, right? So whatever feels good to you, do not be ashamed of however you've got to start reading because you're actually using your intuition. And again, remember, if you haven't, if you didn't catch the beginning of this, go back and watch the replay because I, um, I basically said that you have to open up to receiving the messages. You've got to call in your spirit guides and spirits on the other side, your angels, whoever you want to call in, call them in. And, you know, I always say I call my spirit guides in love and light. You know, please give me accurate messages that make sense and help, you know, whoever I'm reading, um, you know, move on in their life or move forward in their lives. So you want to make sure that you do that little ritual that you start like 
spiritual rituals before you start reading. Because like even me, I get scared. I'm like, no, 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 I got to do a ritual before I start reading my cards. To be honest, I probably don't, but it's just what I do. And I feel more connected when I kind of center myself and I call them in and I take that time to breathe before I go into it. I know that when I do that, my messages are going to be deeper. Okay. Not more wordy, but deeper. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I do this every, I started doing this every week. So this is the third one, Kristen. So if you want to go back, you can check out the last two. The first one, we talk about the difference between Oracle and Tarot. And then last week I introduced the Tarot deck and the major arcana versus the minor arcana and the suits and all that stuff. Derek says, thank you for this. I feel like this is a much easier approach to reading the cards. It is, it is. I can't believe I turned it off like so quickly when I was watching YouTube one time. I was like, okay, that doesn't make any sense. And I wanted it, I'm an analytical person, trying to let that go. So yes, it is a lot easier. I'm so excited I came across your YouTube video last night. Love and appreciate this. Awesome. Your Reiki is so beautiful and healing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and by the way, we've got the Get Over Your Ex Challenge starts tomorrow. I'll probably just pop on here and just like remind everybody after this. Um, starts tomorrow. I'll be live at 9 a.m. Um, going through our first day of getting over your ex in five days, guys. I've got a very big um, goal to achieve here, and we are going to do it. I promise you that, okay? So be with me tomorrow at 9 a.m. if you can. If you can't, make sure you I'll, I'll go on and post another thing um make sure you sign up for the emails because you'll get the replay and you'll get reiki along with it and you'll get all my little extra bonuses that i have for you guys to really help you detach from your ex okay much love i hope you enjoyed this i will be back next tuesday for tarot tuesday and don't forget to check me out for freebie fridays i got a good one coming up this week all right Mwah. much love to you i will talk to you all soon Bye.